If you want to reinvent your life, the fastest way to do so is to take action. And the first thing I believe you must do is to ditch the victim mindset and take full accountability and responsibility for your choices. Let me tell you a quick story. So back in 2008, I was incarcerated on felony drug charges. I was a horrific drug addict. I was in there for selling drugs. My life was in the depths of despair. And my cellmate asked me a question. He said, Doug, why are you in jail? And I started to blame everybody else for my problems but myself. I started to blame my parents for their divorce. I started to blame the kids that bullied me. I started to blame the girls that rejected me. And I started to blame all the sports teams that cut me for all of my problems. He looked at me and he said, Doug, quit being a victim. And I said, what do you mean? He's like, you're blaming everybody else for your problems but yourself. He said, listen up. You have two choices. You can be a man, look yourself in the mirror, and say to yourself, I got myself here. I made a choice to get here, and it's up to me to change. Or you can be a victim, go cry in the corner, and say, woe is me, and blame everybody else for your problems. He's like, most people will do that. And from that moment on, I felt empowered to change my life. I ended up getting into fitness, and my cellmate trained me in there during my 90-day sentence. And when I got down to do a push-up, I couldn't do a single push-up from my knees, could barely walk. But with my cellmate's motivation and encouragement, training me in there every single day, I was able to do a set of 10 push-ups and run a mile by the time my sentence was over. And that experience completely shaped who I am today and transformed my life in every which way possible. It all started with me ditching the victim mindset and taking full accountability for my life. And I had to stop blaming everybody else for my problems. Even though some of the things I went through may have been challenging, it doesn't mean it's an excuse to behave poorly or in a certain way for the rest of my life. So if you're listening to this or if you're watching this, what I invite you to do is to let go of the past. You can't live in the past. If you want to keep your eyes forward on your future, on what you want to achieve in the coming years, but remembering the past a little bit to use that to use as a guide and think about some of the mistakes you may have made and how you're going to correct them. Think about some of the choices that you wish you hadn't made. Think about some of the lessons that you learned from some of these things, right? So you want to stop living in the past. You want to stop blaming your past for the way you're behaving today. It's okay to acknowledge and accept that you are the way you are because of certain things that happened, but you don't want to blame it and not take any responsibility to change where you're at. Because remember, if you're going to change who you want to be in the future and if you're going to change who you are, it's up to you to do so and to make that decision. You also want to stop blaming other people for your problems. It's so easy to say, I'm not where I want to be in life because of my mom or my dad. It's so easy to say, I'm not where I want to be in my, in my life because of an ex-boyfriend or an ex-girlfriend. It's so easy to say, I'm not where I want to be in my life um, because of a friend or whatever, whatever the excuse is, right? Take full responsibility for yourself and say, from here on out, I'm going to be responsible for every decision and choice that I make. I'm going to let go of the things that I can't control and I'm going to control the controllables moving forward. The other thing you have to do that goes in line with ditching the victim mindset is adopting a for me mentality. Now, I know this sounds cliche, but there's no other way to look at it when it comes to life. Because if you look at life as everything's happening to me, then it's going to be easy to fall into this victim mindset and start thinking negatively about every single thing that happens in your life. So if you start to see a lot of these things that have happened in your life as quote unquote for me, and they're helping you to grow and evolve as a person, I think you will view adversity and hardship in a much different way than you did before, because you will see that it's helping you build towards a person, towards the person that you want to become. And this also helps you make peace with your past, because I'm sure now you can look back and start to connect the dots on why certain things made you who you are today, how certain things shaped who you are as a human being today, instead of saying things like, why is this happening to me? Or life's not fair to me, or I'm, I'm always this, or I'm always that. You have to ditch that mindset and just shift your perspective on life and acknowledge that everything that you're going through is happening for a reason. And with all that said, you have to take full responsibility and ownership for your choices. Because just like Bad habits can stack up over time, like you start smoking a little bit of weed and it leads into smoking more weed and so on and so forth. The same thing can happen with good habits. You hear a lot, you are what you eat. I always say you are your choices. So what choices do you need to make this year to make sure it's the best year of your life? Is it something with your health? Is it the people you spend time with? Is it um, relationships? 
Is it your career? Is it money? Is it some sort of forgiveness where you need to, to utilize that to let go of the past? Whatever it is, you need to do what you can to control your choices every single day. And you also need to be able to control your choices when something goes wrong in your life. Because if you don't, your choices will control you. And so it's like the, the victim mindset is just so easy to get caught up in, especially when problems come up, because it's easy to focus on the problem. It's easy to just sit there and complain about the problem and say, I can't believe this happened. Oh my gosh, blah, blah, blah. Because working towards a solution takes work. It takes practice. It takes a mindset shift. It takes you putting yourself out there. It takes risk. It takes overcoming your fears. If you can master that in life, you'll be golden. Like if you can really accept the idea that when you go through hard times that you become solution oriented and you have this for you mentality and you, and you say things like, I don't know why certain things are happening right now in my life, but I'm going to do whatever I can to overcome that you will achieve greatness. So taking full responsibility and accountability and ditching the, the victim mindset, there's so many layers to it. Like I said, it's about letting go of the past and not living in the past. It's not blaming others. You got to stop complaining. You have to take ownership for what you're doing now and realize that the reason you're not where you want to be in your life is because of you. And you got to figure out ways to change that. And we're all in different situations. We all have different circumstances. And I understand that. But what I do know is that the only way out of a hard situation, the only way to make your life better is to make better decisions, is to control the controllables, is to focus on what you can. Because if you blame your circumstances and you blame others for where you are in your life, you will be a miserable, sad human being because you will look back with a lot of regret. The second step and the second thing I believe you must do is to Focus on getting into the best shape of your life. Focus on building muscle, getting strong, burning excess body fat if you need to. And it's not just because of the physical benefits, but it's because of the mental benefits. I truly believe that your physical health and your mental health go hand in hand. If you're out of shape physically, I think it really, it really impacts the way you feel mentally and emotionally as well. So do what you can to improve your health and wellness this year and get in the best shape of your life. And so what does that look like? It's, it's getting strong. It's making sure that your cardiovascular fitness is up to par. It's making sure that you're flexible and mobile. It's making sure that your sleep is on track. It's making sure that you're doing whatever you can to manage your stress this year. It's making sure that you're having a better relationship with food and paying attention to what you eat. It means that you're getting enough protein. It means that you're getting enough fiber. If you want to learn more specifics about protocols and, and how to do this in a detail-oriented way, there's plenty of episodes I've done on the podcast where we cover this. But for now, I want to keep it more bigger picture so you understand the importance of it. Because getting into shape is one of the best things you can do for your life overall. And the reason is because of all the non-physical benefits that come from staying committed to yourself and the gym. There's no better way to practice self-love and show yourself that you care about yourself than to show up for your body and take care of your health. When you show up to the gym and you focus on your health and wellness, you develop self-discipline, you develop self-confidence, you develop self-esteem, you practice getting comfortable being uncomfortable, you practice showing up for yourself even when it's tough, even when you're tired, even when you're not feeling your best. It helps you reduce your stress. It helps you sleep better. It helps you with your relationships does all these things. And I'm not, I haven't even touched the physical benefits of exercise. We all know the physical benefits of exercise. And I think those are obviously very important. The reason I think it's so important for people looking to reinvent themselves is because is for what it does for you mentally and emotionally and how it keeps you focused on the future, how it keeps you focused on achieving goals, how it keeps you focused on becoming a stronger version of yourself. It's so important. So get strong. Lose some extra body fat if you need to. Get more steps in throughout the course of the week. Work on your flexibility. Improve your sleep. And the other thing that it will do is you'll meet other people that are like-minded when doing so. And the gym is the best place to meet new people because everybody in the gym is working on bettering themselves. They're cheering people on. You don't hear people complaining. You don't hear people making fun of each other. You don't hear a lot of people gossiping. They're just in there to better themselves, nourish their body, and focus on becoming a better version of themselves. In the gym, it's the best place to practice pushing yourself beyond your limits and overcoming your fears. 
and lifting a weight that you didn't think you could or going on a piece of equipment that you didn't think you could use or taking a class that you didn't think you could finish or running a certain amount of time that you couldn't do. Because let's face it, in life, you're going to have to do things that's scary at times. You're going to have to do things that are challenging. You're going to have to do things that push you. And the gym is a great way to do so. And I promise you that if you focus on getting into the best year, into the best shape of your life this year, you will feel so much better when this year is over. So that's the second thing is to really pay attention to your health and, and wellness, get jacked, get in the best shape of your life, build muscle, burn body fat, because it will truly pay off in the long run. The third step is to quit unhealthy vices. And if you have un unhealthy vices, you know which ones I'm talking about. It's vaping, it's smoking weed, it's drinking excessive amounts of alcohol, it's scrolling on social media, it's complaining all the time, it's spending time with people that don't bring the best out in you just because you want to fit in and you want to not be so alone. It's sitting on the couch and, and not taking action and watching TV because you're you know afraid of taking that next step to move forward in your life. Because when you quit these unhealthy vices, you will feel so much better about yourself and so much more confident because you'll realize that A, um, you're not making decisions that make your life worse, but B, you're going to have this level of confidence and self-esteem because you know that you don't have to use certain things to numb out or deal with the pain in your life. You know that you no longer have to smoke weed to deal with your anxiety and stress. You no longer have to come home and drink a bottle of wine to deal with life. You know that you no longer have to scroll on social media to check out and forget about some of the things you need to do in your life, right? I can go on and on with examples. Maybe you need to stop procrastinating. Maybe you need to stop making excuses for, for why you're putting something off and really get to the root of what's going on there so you can take action and move forward. We've all had these vices, right? And so I think that you really need to pay attention to that. And if you're not sure if it's unhealthy, if you're not sure if your relationship with this thing is, is bad, maybe take out a piece of paper and journal about your relationship with that thing Talk about where it fits in with your goals in your life. Talk about how you feel afterwards. Talk about why you do a certain thing. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a mental health professional. But I think that if you do those things, I think it will help you like, unpack a level of self-awareness around why you're doing certain things in your life so that you can learn to have a better relationship with that thing. Or you can convince yourself enough to stop doing that thing because you're realizing the negative impact it's having on your life. So... Ditch the, ditch the unhealthy vices, turn to things like fitness, turn to things like meditation, turn to things like podcasts, turn to things like community, turn to things like spirituality, right? These will all be things that I think can give you a very similar feeling to these vices because I believe a lot of these unhealthy vices, it's just a solution to pain, right? It's like, I'm feeling anxious, so I'll do a drug or I'm feeling stressed, so I'll drink or I'm feeling nervous about starting a task, so I'll scroll on social media. I'm afraid of doing this thing, so I'll procrastinate. And when you start to address the root of all that, I think you will find um, a lot of peace because you will discover that you don't need to use those vices as much because now you're dealing with the root of all that stuff in a healthy way. And so if you have unhealthy vices that you're doing every single day or every single week, figure out why you're doing them. Quit. Do what you need to do. Get some help. Because trust me, they are going to bring you down long term. And what happens with these unhealthy vices is they stack over time and they end up leading to other things. So be careful and deal with those unhealthy vices before they get out of control. The fourth thing, and I've touched on this before, is that you should spend time with winners this year. You should spend time with people that have common futures and not common pasts. Because your environment creates a false sense of normalcy. If you're spending time with people that are consistently making bad decisions, if you're spending time with people that consistently bring you down, if you're spending time with people that consistently gossip, you will begin to become like those people. And you will often look back and say, why am I not in a place where I want to be? And a lot of it boils down to the people that you spend time with. So make sure you're not spending time with the wrong types of people. And maybe you get out a piece of paper and you like write down the three to five people that you spend the most time with and, and maybe develop some self-awareness around that and say like, okay, these are my top people that I spend time with. 
How do I feel when I'm around them? What kind of things do we do together? What kind of goals do they have for their life? What kind of things are they doing? And then how does that line up with my goals in my life? And if they're out of alignment, then maybe that's a sign that you need to find some new friends and create a new sense of normalcy for your life and start spending time with winners and start spending time with people that bring the best out in you. You start spending time with people that there's a lot of alignment because if you're somebody who's focused on improving your health and not feeling sorry for yourself and making a difference in the world and you're hanging out with people that are opposite of that, well, it's going to make that a little bit harder, I think. So find people that are in alignment with where you're going, not where you were. And maybe this is the year that you hire a coach or you join some sort of networking group or mastermind or you attend more events to find more people that are like-minded because people will often ask me, they're like, Doug, how do I find more people that have common futures? How do I find more people that um, have alignment with where I'm at? And the easiest way to do so is to just write down like your goals and to write down your values and to write down the person that you want to become and all these things and then figure out like where do I find those people? So if you're somebody that's focused on your health, for instance, where do I find more people that are doing that? Well, obviously there's the gym, there's yoga studios, there's spin classes, there's all those things. But maybe you start attending like hiking events where there's a, a meetup where there's a bunch of people going on a hike. Maybe you start to attend some fitness conferences or you start to attend like some networking groups that focus on health and wellness, or you start to hire a coach and maybe they help introduce you to, to other people that are in line with those goals, right? So you have to, you have to develop awareness around what you want in your life in order to attract or begin to like chase after and pursue some of the people that you want in your life, right? You have to focus on spending time with the right people. The harsh reality in all of this is there's that old quote by Jim Rohn where he's like, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with or something like that. And it's so true. When I was doing drugs, when I was dealing drugs, all the people around me were doing those exact same things. And I thought it was incredibly normal to do those things. I thought it was incredibly normal to behave in a certain way. And then when I got out of that and I'm doing what I'm doing now and I'm spending time with people that are focused on making a difference in the world, maybe they have a podcast, maybe they have a fitness business, maybe they're in their personal development, maybe they're building a brand. This is what I see as normal now. So when I'm around people not like that, when I'm around people that are making, when I, when I see people making bad decisions, that's not attractive to me anymore like it was when I was a kid. So it's incredibly important to pay attention to this and making sure that you're spending time with the right types of people. People that are going to be your biggest cheerleaders, but also aren't afraid to give you a little bit of constructive criticism and feedback if you're behaving out of character. So that's the fourth thing is to spend time with winners and make sure you're hanging out with the right types of people. The fifth thing, especially when you're trying to reinvent yourself, is to have a morning routine. Now let me explain. A lot of times when people are feeling lost, they're feeling out of sorts, lack of control, they're just in the depths of despair, they don't know where to start or where to, where to turn. And so I think the, one of the easiest things you can do is just to start your day off with a win. A win could be making your bed that day. A win could be going for a walk. A win could be writing down some things that you're grateful for. A win could be, you know, responding to emails that are important to you, whatever the example is, starting your day off with a win and then compounding those things. And what do I mean by that? Well, I think that when you achieve something, you build self-confidence, you build self-worth, you build self-esteem. So let's just say that you're somebody who's looking to change yourself and change your habits throughout the course of this year. So let's just say you're somebody that never makes your bed ever or you haven't made your bed for weeks or months, and then you make your bed. Wow, now I feel better about myself. And you're like, huh, I have this positive mindset. What's next? Oh, I'm feeling good. Maybe, I'm, maybe I'll go for a walk now because I'm feeling good about my morning. So you go for like a 10-minute walk. Then you come back inside, and you're like, oh, that was awesome. Now I'm going to spend time journaling, and I'm going to write down some things that I want to get done today. I'm going to write down some things that I'm grateful for. And you're like, oh, wow. this is So you see where I'm going with this, and now you've shifted your day and you're starting things off with a completely different mindset and outlook than you did before. And that took what? Maybe 20 minutes at the most, a couple minutes to make your bed, 10 minute walk, and then a few minutes to write. So that's just one example of how you can master a morning routine or how you can start a new morning routine fresh. Because the other side of that, if you don't do those things, a lot of these habits can compound and you put things off. You're like, I won't make my bed today. 
Um, I'll do it tomorrow. And then you say, well, I'm not going to get my morning walk in. I'll do it tomorrow. And then you say, I'm not going to respond to emails today. I'll do it tomorrow. And then these things start to compound. And then you get to the end of the day and you're like, man, I didn't get done nearly as much as I wanted to. And why? And it started with putting things off in the morning and not starting your day off with a win. I think it's so important to set yourself up for success first thing in the morning. If you're saying, Doug, I want to know some things that I can do in the morning to, to win the day other than focusing on these quote unquote small wins, what should I do? The things I'll say is this, making your bed is obviously important. There's a whole book on that, that, that I've read and I gifted to all of my personal training clients one year. Um, I would say getting in some sort of movement first thing in the morning is going to be really beneficial, whether that's a walk, whether that's a run, whether that's going to the gym and, and lifting weights, just some sort of movement to get the blood flowing and to, to get the endorphins going. Gratitude is always something that I, I preach and I practice, like writing down, not just one thing you're grateful for, but like why you're grateful for that thing, right? And then on top of the gratitude, writing down your goals for the day, writing down a few things that are going to move the needle for you personally and professionally that you need to get done today so that tomorrow is a better day than it was today. It could be, you know, spending time, you know, allotting some time to, to focus on an important tr project that you've been wanting to work on. It could be spending time to educate yourself or to learn something new in the morning to get your brain going. I mean, all these things, right? But, and I'm just giving you examples. I mean, you have to find what works for you. But hopefully me, me sharing this stuff at least piques your interest a little bit and at least get some ideas going to say, okay, these are some things that I can implement into my morning so that I can become a better version of myself. Like, oh, you said gratitude. I've really been slacking on that. Let me, let me get back on that. Oh, you said making your bed. I haven't made my bed in a few months. Let me get back to that. Oh, you said movement. You talked about fitness a few minutes ago. That's important to me. Maybe I'll try to get in a five to 10 minute walk this morning. You have to figure out what works for you because the way that you start your day is so important and it compounds over time. If you start your day with positive things, healthy things, things that help you win, things that help you feel better, then you're going to carry that energy with you throughout the course of your day. You're going to be better at work. Your relationships are going to improve. You're going to feel better about yourself and you're going to end up having a more fulfilled day. And those days will stack and compound and you'll look back two weeks from now or two months from now and you'll say things like, wow, I've gotten so much more done or I'm so much further along than I thought I would or wow, look at these skills that I've developed or wow, like look how much further I can walk or whatever the example is, all because you committed to starting your day with some wins and focused on implementing things into your morning routine that would set yourself up for success. Hopefully this video helped. Obviously there's plenty more things you could do, but these are just five things that I think if you focused on right now, you could really reinvent yourself and have the best year of your life this year. And as a reminder, those five things are to ditch the victim mindset and take full responsibility and accountability for your life and control the controllables and own your choices. The second thing is to get into the best shape of your life, to get jacked, burn body fat, get strong, work on your health and fitness. The third thing is to quit unhealthy vices. The fourth thing is to spend time with winners. And the fifth thing is to master your morning routine and start your day off with wins. If you like this video, stay tuned for a clip from another conversation that will help keep you motivated. How do you like win that battle of the mind on a daily basis? Because you know, you're, you got a lot going on. I'm sure yeah. there's days you're tired, exhausted. Like how do you win that battle? It's a battle that can't be won through motivation or self-inspiration or having Doug inspire me, motivate me, pump me up. It has to be internal. And the only thing internal is discipline. Because then when I'm, like I said, when I'm tired, when I'm hungry, when I didn't sleep well, I had nightmares, maybe me and the, me, me and the wife got into an argument. And so whatever. Discipline says that I have to live a structured life and that I need to work out, I need to eat right, I need to have a structured schedule in order to be able to run this big machine called HQ, where we have five or six businesses running out of here. And so some days I go to the gym under protest. I don't go there, you know, yippee, it's exciting, I can't wait. I go there under protest. Uh, and in fact, Leighton's worked out with me before. Uh, some days, most days, I'm mumbling to myself and talking to myself and, you know, literally coaching myself through the workouts in a positive way. Then there's those days that I woke up angry and bitter and didn't feel like going, so I'm going to the gym under protest, but I'm going anyway because of discipline. 
And in those days, I might be using very choice words that are not so motivational, not so inspirational. I'm just cussing up a storm at the dumbbells, at the pull-up bar, at the turf that I'm pushing the sled on. But guess what? I got it done anyway, because discipline forces me to have structure. Motivation is fleeting. And I think one of the other things that kind of helps people stay accountable and keep going is like being accountable to somebody else and having a mentor and having people coach them. I know you coach some of the most successful people in, in, in my industry, in your industry, and that you've had mentors along the way too. And you mentioned that you don't let the, the, the feedback from your project event like consume your mind. But I also know that you have people in your corner that you bounce off ideas off of and people who maybe give you some constructive feedback. So how can people balance those two? Because I feel like sometimes people are just so overconsumed with like negativity and stuff online, or they're the opposite where they think they know everything right. and they push everybody away. Yeah, and the solution to that that I found as I've gotten older is ego. The more I can control my ego, put it aside, because ego kind of puts on blinders and you stop seeing the version of yourself. You stop seeing the arrogant version of yourself. You start surrounding yourself. If you're very egotistical, you start surrounding yourself with yes men and yes women who just want to appease you. If you can put the ego aside and go, hey man, give me honest feedback. Give me honest feedback. Um, I need to improve and I don't know what I don't know and you guys have outside eyes on me. I trust your core values. I trust the kind of man you are. I, I love the character and the integrity that you walk in. Uh, same with you and same with you. So here it is, guys, brutal, honest feedback. I may get hurt, but give it to me anyway. And so it's imperative to do that. Most people don't do that because, well, you are going to get hurt. It doesn't feel good when a friend says, you know, B, this is how you show up sometimes. Oh, shit, I didn't realize I show up like a bull in a china closet. And then immediately we go to defense. Yeah, but the reason I was that, like that on that day is because I got some bad news from a coaching client, and, and he was upset, and I wanted to help him, but I couldn't. And so I came into HQ kind of red hot, you know? And so I didn't really mean, see, B, you're actually now being defensive about it. You asked me for feedback. And so you have to just sit there, put your ego aside, take the feedback. And then oftentimes I'll ask, well, can you give me examples? You know, give me examples. And instead of being defensive about it or explaining why it was that way, I go, got it, understood. So that's how you saw it? Yep. And that's what, how it made you feel? Yep. First off, I'm sorry. Secondly, it won't happen again. We need to ask for feedback. We need to cultivate feedback from people that we are aligned with in core values, character, and integrity, that we feel that you know, we honor them, we respect them. Because I won't go get feedback from someone who is fat and sloppy and out of shape and sloth-like because we just don't share the same vision, man. What's been like a shift that you've made in the last year that's led to a lot of growth for you? The shift that I made last year that's led to a lot of growth is, dude, I started my podcast, The Bedros Cooling Show. You, you and I have known each other for a while. I had The Empire Show for four years where I'm interviewing other entrepreneurs or me and Craig Ballantyne, we're co-hosts, you know, we're kind of bouncing things off each other. And I had The Empire Show for four years. We did 209 episodes. It was always me and somebody else. So you always feel like someone else is carrying the weight, um, you know, if this episode thrives or if it doesn't, it was on us. I started the Bedros Cooling Show, and it's just me looking down the barrel of the camera and delivering from my radiance, from my gut, speaking to men about the topics of men and about what's happening to humanity today and in our world today. And it's forced so much personal growth because that's when you realize, okay, I feel called to do this, but I also realize it all hinges on me. The success of every episode hinges on me. When people say they hate how this episode is, they're really saying how they hate me, right? So you have to develop a thicker skin, put, put more ego aside, develop even higher levels of self-confidence, become even more congruent, which led to me going, you know, because I would you know, tell people on the show, like, fellas, like, if you're over drinking, if you're over smoking weed, like, stop it. You know, you're just escaping from your, your realities. Why are you doing that? And then last November 12th, I was like, what the fuck am I doing? I'm drinking, I'm an occasional drinker. I'll drink at a restaurant, I'll have a cocktail or two, or when I'm speaking at an event, if there's a meet and greet that's gonna happen, I had told myself, my story was, I'm an introvert, I don't like doing the meet and greet, but the event host who had me speak also paid extra for me to do the meet and greet. So I just have a couple of cocktails, I can loosen it up, take the edge off, do the meet and greet. Bro, I'm a grown man. 
I could take the edge off by just having good self-talk and then going out there and meeting people and asking great questions and letting them feel special and then taking a selfie picture with them. What was I doing having two cocktails before going out there? I certainly wasn't addicted. I had a dependency, but that dependency did not serve me. So I had to lead with even more congruency by saying, guys, I stopped alcohol. I stopped weed. The next week I stopped weed. So November 12th, I stopped alcohol uh, last year. Uh, next week, I'm like, I'm not even going to smoke weed. Like I used to smoke weed like every, I don't know, four weeks or every six weeks. And then I got some wild hair up. And I'm like, the week after that, I was like, muscle stopping Diet Coke. And then I realized, wait a minute, I actually enjoy Diet Coke from time to time. I'm going to show some grace to myself. But um, you, you have to become more congruent when you do something that's just you looking down the barrel of a camera, speaking to the masses. And that's been the greatest self-development uh, leap that I've had in the last 12 months. Any of these limiting beliefs that you struggled with before, do they ever creep up on you, especially with what you're doing now? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. On May 20th, so as we sit here, today is October something, 19, 20, I don't know what it is. But on May 20th, I tore my tricep, like 95% of my tricep <laughs> retracted up. I was boxing with my son, and I threw a left cross, and he checked me, and pop goes my tricep. Working out is as therapeutic for me as it is just for physical health. Uh, you know this. And so I found myself getting a little funky because I can't do chest presses, shoulder presses, tricep presses, can't do burpees, can't do push-ups. So it was literally using the uh, cable fly machine, 10 pounds, doing 200 reps at a time on one side, and you could see your muscles atrophying. Everything had turned black and blue. The doctors are telling you they want to cut you and reattach and all this stuff. And you're like, but I got all these speaking gigs I got to do. I can't be in the sling and in the cast and I don't have the time or desire for that. And so the moment there's a life ambush, as my friend Jason Redman, uh, a retired Navy SEAL and former coaching client and now a dear friend, says, when you are at a, when you're sitting on the X of a life ambush, you're going to start the old, skeletons are going to come and start haunting you again. And hey, you know, you're going to start putting on weight. Hey, you're never going to be as strong again. Hey, you're never going to be as mobile again. You're not going to be able to wrestle your son again and do jujitsu and box. And so I've had to reconcile with that. But then I looked in the mirror one day and I was like, wait a minute, I'm able to contract that one little tricep. And I remember when I tore my bicep, I couldn't contract it because it was fully detached. I reread the MRI stuff and it's like, oh, one of the heads are still kind of attached. Smart enough to know that the body builds scar tissue. If I stay in a positive mental attitude, if I can eat healthy and clean, if I can give myself time to heal, if I can get ultrasound and laser treatments on that tendon, on that muscle, maybe there's hope. And so here we are, I haven't gotten the surgery. I'm 85% got my strength back. Uh, I'm about ready to go out and surf again because to surf, you have to do a burpee to pop up on your board, right? You paddle, 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 and then you catch the wave and you do a burpee to pop up on your board. And the burpee is what I wasn't able to do. And so I'm realizing that, dude, I might be able to actually live with a torn tricep because the rest of that muscle is developing and growing. Uh, but it put me in a funk because for a while there, I was disabled. And so the darkness comes, the self-doubt comes, the man being jacked and big and lean as part of my identity, right? Uh, same thing during the pandemic. We lost 218 franchise locations and Fit Body Bootcamp is definitely a part of my identity. Like it's helped me grow. So again, another, another X that I was sitting on, ambush, life ambush. Uh, yet another one, three weeks ago, my mom died. We knew she was gonna die, she had Alzheimer's. I was there holding her hand, rubbing her head, talking to her, she took her last breath. Uh, we buried her just last week. She's her mom, man. You're, she's her connection to the world. Like you came from her. She's her connection to the world. And you realize I'm up next. And my mom was my best friend when we came to this country. My dad, my older brother, older sister, they all had multiple jobs. Me and my mom were trying to figure out Kmart and Jemco and Zodis and food stamps and how we're going to, you know, piece together food for that evening for the family. All these thoughts start coming in. And, and, and when those thoughts start coming in, you feel your vibrational frequency goes down. And when your vibrational frequency goes down, that is when the negative self-talk begins. That is when the limiting beliefs begin. So I almost look at it as like a Microsoft computer, Microsoft-driven computer. Like 
it can isolate the virus, but it's never going to get rid of the virus. In fact, if you remember the McAfee virus scan and all these different virus scans that were out there, it always said the virus has been quarantined. Never, it never removed it off the hard drive. It was quarantined. And I almost look, feel like an injury or any kind of life ambush can open up that box to allow the virus to come back up. This is why, again, you need great life structure, a good circle of influence who like believes in you, shares your core values, eat right, sleep right, have all your shit in order because the life ambush is inevitable. Mom's gonna die, pandemic's gonna happen, triceps gonna tear, car accident's gonna happen, someone's gonna get diagnosed with cancer, and when they do, it is my structure and discipline that's gonna pull me through when the devil starts speaking and whispering in my ear. I think that's ultimately one of the biggest mindset shifts that people need to make is their relationship with pain and how they they know they need to like figure out a way to deal with that and not use it as an excuse to to drink more alcohol or smoke the weed right. or get into all these other It's easier to do that. It's easier sure. to go to the escape tools. I'm going to watch so much TV that I don't think about my mom or my tricep until I get fat and ugly and uh, right it's it's easier to do it or I'm just going to drink and smoke until the pandemic's over, but now I've lost 500 locations instead of 200. You have to address the thing, and you have to address it in the most inefficient way. And the most inefficient way is to actually problem solve through it. The efficient but horrible way to do it is, let me just smoke and drink and vice myself through it, but it only gets worse on the other side of it. So what are some of the things that you would recommend somebody doing if they're faced in the in the thick of adversity. Maybe they're lacking the, the discipline that you have, but they're trying to, to, to work their way there when they've hit this roadblock and they don't know yeah. what to do. Well, uh, number one, build the life structure, the, the, the support system, your community, your circle of influence, control the thoughts and the input. Do all of that, the discipline, do all of that before the life ambush comes. Like if you're watching this and listening to this and you're like, life is pretty good right now. Great, great. Build a better circle of influence around you. Build a better structure, more discipline. Get your workouts in. Learn to eat right so that when the inevitable, inevitable, not maybe, inevitable life ambush comes, you could lean on that. Now, if you're like, oh, I'd have no life structure. Everyone around me is a loser. I don't work out. I don't eat right. I'm smoking and drinking my way through, through the days. I feel horrible. I'm anxious. I'm depressed. I just feel like the world is over. And I just got some bad news. I just hit the X of ambush. Holy hell. Well, you know what? You do the three C's. You control what you can. You cope with what you can't control, and you concentrate on what counts. So in that moment, you're like, what can I control? Well, I can control my thoughts right now. I can control if I'm alone or if I'm talking to friends who actually care for me, love on me, and pour into me. I can control a workout. Maybe I don't want to go to the gym on my own because I don't trust myself. I'll walk out after doing one set. So I'm going to be like, hey, Doug. Hey, Ed, can you guys come to the gym with me? Let's work out together. I'm in a dark place. I'm going to lean on my community. I'm going to start reaching out, but I'm not going to be the lone wolf because the lone wolf dies, the wolf pack survives. I'm going to trust on my pack, control the controllables, cope with what you can't control in that moment or in that phase of life, and then understand that con you have to concentrate on what counts. And there's only a small handful of things you need to concentrate on. Like, am I working out? Am I eating right? Do I have a good circle of influence? You know... Okay, am I showing gratitude for even being alive? And maybe you're like, actually, I don't want to be alive right now. I don't want to be alive right now. So I'm not grateful for being alive. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, there's a dude with like one leg and one prosthetic leg um, hobbling through life. You got two working legs. So maybe if you just compare yourself and realize maybe it's okay to be alive. Maybe I do have it better than some people. And this is just a phase of life and this too shall pass. And we have to look at it that way. If we don't, we start making these permanent decisions while under temporary feelings. Uh, and that is the worst way to lead yourself through life. I'm sure a lot of people come to you and they struggle with the victim mindset. They're feeling sorry for themselves. They're like in that mode of like, well, I'm never gonna be like that person. My life sucks. I must not be worthy or whatever. Like, how do you, how do you help somebody snap out of that? It, it goes back to the very first answer get lean and jacked. If, if they're in that state, my life's not worthy, I'm not in a good place, you know, this sucks, I'm the victim, odds are they also have 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 pounds to lose. And so, hey, I got an idea, let's get lean and jacked. Wait, what? I'm in a dark place right now. Great, great, let's go get lean and jacked. Because again, hire a coach, a nutrition coach, a personal trainer, pay money, be held accountable, get lean and jacked. 
How's that gonna help me? I'm in a very dark place right now. I'm the victim. I get it. But once you have abs, once you have veins in your body, once you feel proud of this vessel that you've built, you have such high confidence. You have such great rapport with yourself. You have such great reputation with self that you're like, bring on the new challenge, sir. All of a sudden, that doubt and depression and all that goes away. It starts with self. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, I really think you're gonna like this video as well. I'll see you there.